Hi guys, gonna mix things up a little bit today. Instead of reviewing an anime, I'm gonna review a live action adaptation of an anime. I'm gonna be reviewing Attack on Titan, the live action movies. As you can see, these are on DVD, not Blu-ray. Sorry, Alfie. Um, I'm sure you all know what Attack on Titan is, but in case any of you have been living under a big giant rock for the last five years, I'll have a go at summarizing it for you. Um, Attack on Titan is set in a world where big giant humanoids called Titans have appeared and their favourite meal just happens to be humans. Um, humans have obviously become scared of these Titans because they're so powerful and they've gone to live behind three giant stone walls. Um, and they've been safe for about a hundred years. Except one day, a big giant colossal Titan appears and everything changes. And then humanity has got to try and find a way back so they form some sort of army. Um, that's a very basic summary and that's what I'm going to leave it at. Hopefully no spoilers there. Um, the anime itself, I'm only fit, just finished season two, so I haven't watched season three or four yet. So sorry if anything's inaccurate for the future. Also, if you're leaving any comments, please no spoilers. Um, the movies themselves are quite different than the anime series. Um, there's quite a big time jump in the first movie. Um, in the TV series, they, um, the wall gets destroyed from the Colossal Titan and then they sort of go into training camps and train up to become soldiers. But in this, they skip all that. The wall gets destroyed and then they're straight on their mission. Um, the... <sighs> story itself, the story of the two movies itself, actually covers pretty much the first 12 episodes of the anime, I think. Um, that the, the, the whole story covers them trying to repair the wall. Um, they do wrap up the story though and sort of make it feel complete. Um, a few other alterations. Um, in the anime, Mikasa is alongside Eren the whole time, but in this, during the big attack at the beginning, she goes missing. Uh, for several years and reappears later on so they're not sort of they're sort of lost friends instead of the friends they've always been um there's also a lot of characters that have been removed and lots of new characters added in um i think basically the only characters that are really there are Aaron, armin mikasa and john i think oh and um hanji the mad scientist lady uh, i think everyone else seems to be missing and they've added in Eren's uh, long lost brother, which might be in the anime in season three or four, but it definitely isn't in the first two seasons. Um, what I thought of the movies themselves was they were actually quite good. Um, it didn't really feel like Attack on Titan. It felt more like, like a giant kaiju horror, like Godzilla or something like that. Maybe even, in a way, it looked kind of similar to the Power Rangers at times. Um, but I actually thought the two movies themselves were pretty decent. Uh, I gave them, I think they're, they're probably both 7 out of 10s. You know, 6s at points, 7s at others. But, you know, they were still quite enjoyable if you can sort of, if you're the sort of person that can move yourself away from all the alterations. I know, like, some people, like, this hasn't stuck to the manga, this isn't supposed to be like this, and it really sort of bogs it down for them. But for me, I managed to overlook that and managed to enjoy this for what it was. Um, there's lots of good action scenes. Uh, the humour's really, really good. In particular, the mad scientist, uh, Hanji. All of her scenes are fantastic. She's over the top, but you can't help but laugh. Um, and also, the story really got to the point. I know it only covers the first 12 episodes, but they managed to put in a new ending that wraps up the whole thing. And, it, you know, it just really cracks down. I know sort of the anime, a lot of people have got problems because there's so much filler and they just take their time to get everywhere, which I mean, you tend to get with shonen shows. But in this, it just it just cracked right on with it. A to B, not really too much in between. And that sort of really worked for it, I think. Um, the alterations themselves were actually recommended by the manga writer as well. So it's not completely inauthentic. He sort of said, you know, this is the way I think he get to work as a movie. And that's what they did. So, yeah, I think that sort of really worked for it. Um, and yeah, yeah, I sort of really enjoyed it, really. Um, not the best, but not the worst. Um, it was slightly low budget, though, I think. Um, I mean, by Japan's standards, it probably wasn't. But I know 
if you compare it up against the way Hollywood pictures look, it it looked subpar. Um, the Titans didn't sort of blend in with the real world or anything. They sort of stood off a little bit. They may not have been CGI, but they just they didn't really sort of work. And there are some scenes when two Titans are fighting each other later on. You should probably know what I'm talking about where it looked more like two people in costumes fighting each other, you know, like something from, like, the Power Rangers yet again, that just sort of, like, hey, there's a guy in a latex suit fighting another guy in a latex suit. It doesn't look right. But that aside, the actual story and what they did was really good. It's it's probably... Without, off the top of the head, I'd say it's probably one of the better live-action adaptations I've seen in a while, so... I can't completely install it, although I assume a lot of people that will check this out, I mean, they probably won't check it out, to be fair, but if they do check it out, they're going to come away not liking it, because people just don't like live-action adaptations, unfortunately. Um, as far as recommendations go, like I say, it feels like a, a giant kaiju movie, really, so probably anything like Godzilla from the olden days and all the rubber suits and all that would probably be perfect for anyone that likes this. Um, however, if you want a live action adaptation with lots of action that's done to a good standard, I would probably recommend the Gantz movies because they're done quite well. Um, otherwise, that's, that's, that's about all I can recommend. And that's all I've got to say about Attack on Titan, the live action adaptation. Um, I assume, you know, you're all going to be hesitant about it and say no, but I recommend checking it out and seeing what everyone thinks. Um, thanks for watching.